Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The United Nations says levels of greenhouse gases responsible for global warming have reached a record high. According to the U.N.'s World Meteorological Organization, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere rose by nearly three parts per million from 2012 to 13, the largest single-year increase since detailed records began three decades ago. Last year, concentrations of carbon dioxide Oxide reached nearly 400 parts per million, the highest level in at least 800,000 years. As oceans absorb the increased carbon, ocean acidification has reached a rate that is, quote, unprecedented at least over the last 300 million years. In a press release, the agency's secretary general, Michel Charot, called the data a scientific base for global action on climate change. Quote, we are running out of time, he said. The report comes ahead of the U.N. Climate Summit and the People's Climate March here in New York later this month. Another study on climate change has warned the southwestern United States is at an increased risk of devastating drought. Cornell University professor Toby Alt discussed the results on Monday. The risk of a decade-long drought is normally about 50 percent, but with climate change, it goes up to about 80 or 90 percent, according to our results. And for a multiple-decade-long drought, a mega drought, the risk is normally in the order of 5 to 15 percent, but with climate change, it goes up to between 20 and 50 percent for a lot of the Southwest. California is in the midst of an epic three-year drought, with more than 58 percent of the state deemed to be an exceptional drought, the most severe category possible. Iraqi lawmakers have approved a new government. Shiite Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi will share power with two deputy prime ministers, one Sunni and one Kurdish. The key posts of defense minister and interior minister have not yet been filled. Speaking on Monday, Secretary of State John Kerry hailed the new parliament as a necessary step in the fight against militants with the Islamic State, or ISIL. Tonight, Iraq has a unity government. Tomorrow, I will travel to the Middle East to continue to build the broadest possible coalition of partners around the globe to confront, degrade, and ultimately defeat ISIL. On Wednesday, President Obama will lay out in even greater detail our coordinated global strategy against ISIL. On Monday, the U.S. military said its latest round of airstrikes in Iraq near the Haditha Dam killed 50 to 70 Islamic State fighters. The European Union's agreed to expand sanctions on Russia over its role in eastern Ukraine, but the EU says it'll hold off on imposing sanctions right away amidst a ceasefire between pro-Russian rebels and Ukrainian troops, which has been disrupted by periodic clashes. A U.N. human rights official says the number of people killed in the Ukraine crisis has topped 3,000 and could be significantly higher. The number includes the 298 people on board Malaysia Airlines Flight 17, a new report report by the Dutch Safety Board out today finds the plane was hit by multiple high-energy objects and broke apart in the air over eastern Ukraine. The report does not assign blame. Yemeni police have opened fire on Shiite protesters marching on the prime minister's office in the capital, Sana'a. A rebel leader told AFP seven protesters were killed. The Houthi rebels have been protesting for weeks to call for the resignation of the government and the reinstatement of fuel subsidies. In Chile, a bomb has exploded in a subway station, injuring seven people in the capital, Santiago. Chilean President Michelle Bachelet called it a terrorist attack. This is an abominable act, and therefore we will use the full weight of the law, including invoking anti-terrorism law, because those responsible for these acts will need to be held accountable, and we're going to take all measures to ensure that people can continue to live their lives in peace and tranquility. President Obama has extended the more than 50-year-old embargo on trade to Cuba for another year. In a statement, Obama said the embargoes, quote, in the national interest of the United States. Each year, for more than two decades, the United Nations General Assemblies voted overwhelmingly to condemn the U.S. embargo against Cuba. The most recent vote was 188 to 2, with only the United States and Israel supporting the embargo. 
In Peru, an anti-logging activist and three other leaders of the Ashaninka native community have been murdered in a remote area near the Brazilian border. Edwin Choto was a prominent opponent of illegal logging, which is devastating the Amazon region. He'd received death threats from the loggers, whom local authorities say are suspected of carrying out the killings. A new report by Human Rights Watch finds Israel has unlawfully coerced nearly 7,000 Eritrean and Sudanese migrants into returning to their home countries, where they may face torture and other abuses. After fleeing human rights crises at home, the migrants have faced indefinite detention, restrictions on health care access, and the rejection of 99.9 percent of asylum claims in Israel. The United States Senate has voted to advance a constitutional amendment that would overturn the Supreme Court's 2010 landmark ruling in Citizens United. The ruling cleared the way for corporations and other special interest groups to spend unlimited amounts of money on elections. On Monday, 20 Republicans joined Democrats as the Senate voted 79 to 18 to open debate on the amendment proposed by Senator Tom Udall, which would restore Congress's ability to limit campaign spending. It would still need approval by two-thirds majority in the Senate before moving to the House. Documents from Edward Snowden have revealed details about the U.S. government's secret plans to conduct economic espionage for the benefit of U.S. corporations. The Obama administration has acknowledged conducting economic spying, but denies it does so to benefit U.S. companies. However, a 2009 report from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, published by The Intercept news site, reveals concern about potential challenges to U.S. corporations from foreign multinationals. It suggests using cyber operations against research facilities in foreign countries, then assessing, quote, whether and how the findings would be useful to U.S. industry. A former portfolio manager for SAC Capital has been sentenced to nine years in prison for what the government has called the largest insider trading case in history. Matthew Martoma was charged with conducting illegal trades based on inside information about the development of an Alzheimer's drug, netting $276 million in profits and averted losses for SAC Capital. He was the eighth employee of the firm to be convicted of insider trading.